Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with my final top 10 movies of 2022. We've done the bad, we've done the meh, and we've done the sleeper films. It is now time for the films that I reviewed that I thought were good, great, fantastic, need to be watched forever. Going straight to the chase. Number 10 goes to Spider-Man Far From Home. Quite frankly, I do think Spider-Man Homecoming is a little bit better in some aspects than Far From Home, but Spider-Man Far From Home is still a great breath of fresh air after dealing with the issues that the Spider-Man series has dealt with before then. It's a great sequel to Homecoming. It has some great acting, great actor choice, great story. It ties in very well with the MCU, and it's just a fun watch. And it travels a lot. Like, that's something that uh, Orphan Joker would say, is that it travels a lot. So, that is a lot of great elements. And Jake Gyllenhaal, as Mysterio, is fantastic. I still think to this day that Mysterio is not dead. People may say he's dead. I still think he faked it. If you want to have a debate with me on that, I still that uh, Mysterio is dead or not, just comment on the comment section down below. I say Mr. Real's not dead. Number nine goes to Jurassic World, the first of a Jurassic World uh, trilogy. This is a film that I saw a thousand times at the drive-in theater that I worked at back in the summer of 2015. This is a film that I've also seen quite a bit on DVD. This film was a huge breath of fresh air when it comes to the Jurassic Park series after the issues and the drama of Jurassic Park 3. It really has the same aura and feeling as Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is still a lot better than Jurassic World, but Jurassic World is probably by far the best of the sequel trilogy to the Jurassic Park series, like, completely. Again, like, I've seen this film so many times, like, I know what happens, and I can probably quote word for word on, like, the dialogue and everything, but Jurassic World number nine, it's just really, really good. Number eight goes to the original Alien. Again, I would have put Alien Covenant on this top 10 list if I could, but 10 other films had a higher score. Alien, it goes no say that Alien is a lot of people's original go-to when it comes to the series. Some people like the sequel Aliens more. I like Alien a lot because it really opened the door for a lot of horror movies in the future because it came out in 1979 and it really set the tone when it came to sci-fi horror and, and whatnot and it created one of the most horrifying terrifying creatures in horror history the xenomorph and it the settings great the aura of the film gives the claustrophobia and the feeling that you're being followed or watched is done so well and it's a great film to really educate, I guess, newer horror fans. Because I really believe that people who are just now starting getting into horror should really watch some of the older horror films before getting into the newer ones. So that they have a better mindset of like what to kind of go into and expect and kind of see where all the grandfather of horrors came from. Number seven goes to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. I haven't watched this film a lot since it came out on theaters and DVD. It's kind of sat on my shelf and collected dust since I was a kid when I got it on, on disc, but it, watching it again this year, I am actually really surprised of all the performances that were given. The train scene is always phenomenal. Alfred Molina as uh, Octavius was a fantastic pick. His return in No Way Home was always fantastic and just this film did very well uh, picking up where the original Spider-Man left off. Number six goes to Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I watched the first Sonic the Hedgehog on a streaming service earlier in the year before watching Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and just <laughs> this film is technically in the Jim Carrey career series. I feel like this film was probably besides the first Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was probably one of the first films I feel like Jim Carrey finally had like a career rejuvenation and was actually having probably the most fun he's had in his entire career since probably the late 90s. He really makes a lot for this film as do like the other characters that are reintroduced from the 
uh, first film and the new one that is introduced with Knuckles. And just this film is just put together so well and really gets you hyped up and ready to go for the third one. I kind of am hoping that Jim Carrey does come back for a third Sonic the Hedgehog 3 because he did kind of announce his re uh, retirement after this film came out. So like the producers and the directors kind of prepared themselves in case he doesn't come back, but they're always going to have that offer extended up to him to come back to the series. Always leave the door open for Jim Carrey because we love you, Jim Carrey. If you're retired, we're, we're going to miss you. And leaving on this note, like ending your career after a film like this is probably one of the highlights of your entire career. You were fantastic. We love you, Jim Carrey. Now we're getting to the top five of the films that I reviewed this year that I thought were really fantastic. Number five goes to the original Terminator. A film that is actually a horror movie, a film that really, really set the tone for time travel. I take that back. I wouldn't say that the film really set the tone for a time travel movie because I'm pretty sure time travel was mentioned or used beforehand. But it really expanded on the idea of time travel and how it's, how it's used when it comes to sci-fi and the fact that the introduction of the T-800 and Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator it's just done so well you can't also take anything away from Sarah Connor or Kyle Reese the actors who played those characters Linda Hamilton and Michael Bean it's just it is always a great watch this is kind of like the same thing that I explained when it came to Alien if you're new to the whole movie review thing when it comes to reviewing movies it's really good to look at the older films before you get into the newer ones. That, and as for Alien when it comes to horror, you can kind of say that for this one too, but like, this is another good film that is good to kind of watch before getting into other films of it in the similar genre and just kind of like watching films in general because this is another film that really set the tone for a lot of films. Uh, going forward when it comes to just movies in general. Number four is the film called Memento. This film is a fucking masterpiece from start to finish. It can get pretty confusing if you don't really pay attention to what's going on, but the way this film is mapped out, the way that this film is directed, the way that it's written, the way that it's act, just everything put together, the cinematography, the way it's shot, it's just a complete and utter masterpiece that I feel like when it comes to like movie theory or if you're going into a class in school that studies movies, this is a film that needs to be watched and done as an assignment when it comes to that because this is a really, really, really good movie that I actually watched in a, uh, either I think it was a writing class or something like that or a movie theory class that was introduced to one of my teachers and I do thank the teacher that showed me this film to this day because I just I can't get enough of this film it's fucking fantastic it is a film that I choose not to watch that often because it's not that I feel like I would overdo it for myself and just get tired of watching it it's just it's a masterpiece you don't really when, when it comes to art, you don't want to sit there and just stare at it the entire time and just, like, revel in it, like, 24-7. This is kind of like a book that you read, really enjoy, you put away, and then you go back to read it again several years later because you just want to, like, relive the memories and kind of re-piece some of the elements that you may, or may, you may or may not have missed and just watch the story unfold again and it's just put together so well that I am glad that I had took the time to watch it the first time, the second time, and the third time. Number three goes to the original Jurassic Park. It broke a lot of records. It really set the tone when it came to animatronics. It did really good with the CGI. Its story, granted there's some things that I wish that were in the book that are actually in the movies but that's just me being a Jurassic Park fan but for what it is it is so damn near close to perfect it's just a beautiful masterpiece a great sci-fi horror film and it's a great late night movie to watch with loved ones or friends and family and just 
revel at the magic that they were able to put together when it comes to this movie. Number two and number one were very, very close because they were both... Number two and number one are just films that are masterpieces like Memento or just damn, damn, damn near close to perfection as like Jurassic Park. Number two, I hate saying this because I really fucking love this movie. Number two goes to Spider-Man No Way Home. The only thing that's really holding this movie back for me to making it a number one is just the actor choice for Flash Gordon. That's just something that they've always picked since the first new Spider-Man series, and I know that they're probably not going to change it anytime soon, but that's just a small, minor complaint. This film is a great fan service film. It calls back to the other two Spider-Man uh, series and brings them back home, and it just it opens the door for multiverse films like to no end, and it really really did a good job uh, controlling that multiverse uh, theory and showing it to a crowd that really enjoyed all three of the Spider-Man universes that grew up with all three of them and just seeing all three of them together on, on screen fighting villains from all three of their timelines was just it was it was great I hear that there's an extended cut somewhere that I, I don't know where it's at but as soon as I find out where that extended cut is, I am going to definitely get it and watch it because it's just, it's great. It's just fucking fantastic. But number one for the 2022 best films that I reviewed will have to go to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. One of the greatest action films, if not top five, if not greatest action film ever made in cinema history. And it still, to this day, has not been touched when it comes to everything. This film was, I hate saying this, but this film was really the peak of the Terminator series. Because it really had a hard time getting its footing until it gets the dark fate. Terminator 2 Judgment Day is like Memento. It's a beautiful masterpiece. It's like a son learning from a father figure on how to become a man while also humans teaching uh, good things to cyborgs that are actually natural born get killing machines and just the elements of like learning to love, learning to care, learning to protect and just knowing that like it, when something bad happens you, you can change it. You can make it become better if you push and drive to it. That is why it gets number one. That's all of my top 10s for 2022. Um, I know I didn't really say it in the other top 10s, but if you have enjoyed all these top 10 lists, be sure to subscribe to my channel to catch all the reviews for those movies or the other top 10s that I have done earlier in the year to kind of cover my bases. Again, subscribe to the channel, like, share with your friends, let everyone know that my Check Productions is here to stay. We have social media accounts through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Spotify, all those links are down below. I strongly encourage you guys to go on that Discord link and click on it and join the madness that is there. That way we can uh, share and talk about uh, ideas that like I've already done for the channel or like content that's already been covered or it's another outlet to where you can like share your thoughts on like a possible future project or like just thoughts about anything in general because we pretty much cover everything on this channel and then there's also the spotify link which is a link to the mike checked podcast this is mike check 95 again i hope you enjoyed my top 10 lists of 2022 for the movies that i reviewed keep an eye out for all the movies i'm going to review in 2023 and until then signing out